COVID-19 is the greatest threat that our generation is facing at this point in time. There will be many people who will get sick, many people will suffer, many people will die. In order to limit the spread of COVID-19 and decrease the number of persons who are uh, being admitted to the hospitals and overburdening the health system, leading to even greater numbers of death, deaths, we should practice social distancing. We should stay at home as much as possible, limit our interactions with others, and uh, it may entail locking down the economies in some instances. Initially, we were all told that only persons caring for the sick or those who have symptoms should wear masks. Now, as more and more evidence uh, emerges, we are being asked to wear masks, and it's a, a simple reason. Uh, COVID spreads primarily by droplets, whether through talking, sneezing, or coughing. Persons who have the disease, whether or not they're showing symptoms, they can release droplets of, of saliva, of, of fluid from their, their mouth and nose. And this will hang in the air. And this is what contaminates surfaces and why we, are, we always have to wash our hands and sanitize our hands. Those are the droplets that also get caught up in our, our breaths when we breathe in and they land on our mouths and, and our eyes and that is how we get the infection. So if we produce less droplets, we should have less chances of spreading the disease. And this is why I'm a strong advocate for universal mask wearing by everybody because the more people who wear masks, the less droplets are produced to be hanging around in the air and contaminating surfaces. However, masks are getting ridiculously expensive and they're getting scarce. And we really do have to consider that the masks that we have should be going towards healthcare workers. So how do we reach the balance between everyone wearing a mask yet allowing the healthcare workers to get the limited supply that we, we, we are producing or have access to at this point in time. And we now have to look at cloth masks or even simple things like bandanas or handkerchiefs, scarves. However, these are the lowest forms of protection we can get because the gaps in the, the cloth, they, they allow the, the tiniest droplets to get through. And then even if the droplets land on the fabric, they tend to dissolve and then dry out and the virus particle stays there. So I've been looking at this for a while and I think that the best way we can get more people to wear masks, effective masks, is if we develop a proper filter that can be readily available, cheap, and you can make at home. The simplest solution that I have found is that if we treat regular coffee filters uh, with a salt solution, we can develop uh, a mask filter that can improve the, the, the effectiveness of your regular cloth mask or even a handkerchief. If that is not available, then even toilet paper or napkins, paper towels, anything of the sort can be used as long as you use multiple layers. And uh, to do that, it's, it's simple. You, you create a salt solution and you soak the filter in it and let it dry overnight and then the salt itself will act to kill the virus when it comes in contact with it, when the droplets fall on it. It may sound unbelievable, but if you think about it, for thousands of years, we have been using salt to cure meat, to prevent it from spoiling. And it works in a simple way. When the bacteria that, or germs that would go on the meat to create spoilage, uh, comes in contact with the salt, it is killed and so it cannot grow and reproduce and produce more bacteria and feed on the meat and eventually cause it to, to turn. And it is the same concept that we will be applying here. When the virus particles come in contact with the salt barrier, they would die. The procedure is, is fairly simple and straightforward. You would get some warm water 
it doesn't necessarily have to be boiling, but the warmer, the better. And then you would just get some salt, pour it in and stir to dissolve as much of the salt as possible. And the key is to keep adding salt until you have mixed it enough and you just see a few small crystals that are not dissolving in the bottom of the container. Then you simply take your filter, dip it in the solution. Leave it overnight to dry. If you're gonna be using toilet paper, my suggestion is that you tear off individual squares Same thing if you're going to be using a napkin. Just let it soak. And what you will end up with is that the salt crystals will dry inside of the, the filter itself, inside of the fibers of the filter. So if you compare the regular coffee filter with that that has been treated you will realize that the one with the salt treatment is thicker and you can feel this, the texture change um, as, as soon as it, it's dried. It's the same thing with, with the, the napkin, the paper towels, and you can actually see the salt crystals on the tissue paper. And again, this is the same type of tissue, you will see the, the difference in the, the quality of the paper. Now the spaces between the fibers in the toilet paper are much wider than the coffee filter. So if you're really going to use this as a filter, you ought to use several layers of the toilet paper or the napkin, uh, simply folding it. And then you can just put it within a scarf put it on your face and you have a face mask. Or you can get one of these commercial um, filters, filter masks. Um, I have a N95 filter in that, but it's very easy to just create a mask with a pocket. And I'm sure a lot of persons will be out there doing this. But all you have to do is put your filter within the mask and just like that, you have a mask that is effective at stopping your droplets from getting out. But also, if droplets get through the first layer, they hit your salt filter and the salt crystals will kill the virus particles. After the end of your day, you can always, because it's so cheap, you can just take it out, wash your mask, dispose of your filter, and that is it.